Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt and this is my wife Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching A Few Good Men. What do you know about this movie? Not much. It looks like it's a pretty loaded cast. Yeah, tons of people. Yeah, and then I think this is like a legal drama. Yeah, so I think it's a military setting, um, but I think it's primarily going to take place in the courtroom. Yeah, that's what I gathered as well. No idea what the circumstances are. I assume it has something to do with some military people doing something maybe they shouldn't. Yeah, and this one's been highly requested. Yeah, highly requested, and it won a Patreon poll. So we would like to thank all our patrons for voting for this to win the drama Patreon poll. And the only other thing that I know is I think it's the same director as The Princess Bride. Oh, right. Rob Reiner. Yeah, there was another Rob Reiner movie we watched. Misery, I believe. Oh yeah, because I remember being like, whoa. <laughs> so we're very different movies. Yeah, so both those were excellent. So I'm really excited to check it out. Yeah, me too. So if you would like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you would like to interact with us on our Instagrams, Twitch, or Twitter, all those things will be in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the movie. Oh, Guantanamo Bay. Looks serious. Yeah. No. Whoa. It's not going down without a fight. That's two soldiers and another one. That's what like, I thought. That wasn't like a prisoner or yeah. anything. Oh, the uh, we forgot to talk about it. The one the line that we do know is you can't handle the truth right i know that's a super famous line i have no idea what the context <laughs> is i just know it's from this movie yeah that's cool yeah right Dang. so like synchronized that's fast too so fast captain i'd like to request that it be me who's the attorney so she's a lawyer attorney would you like to sit down? Uh, I'm fine, sir. Have a seat. Okay. <laughs> they were trying to prevent Santiago from naming Dawson in a fence line shooting incident. Oh, trying to keep him quiet? And Santiago was known to be a screw-up. Sir, I'd like to have them moved up to Washington and assigned counsel. I'd be the one who that... Uh, that it be... <laughs> oh, I know you practiced this. Andrew Galloway, why don't you get yourself a cup of coffee? Thank you, sir. I'm fine. Mender, I'd like you to leave the room so we can talk about <laughs> you behind your back. <laughs> there you go. That's honest. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't take, like, the cues. <laughs> She's a hell of an investigator, Jerry. Yeah, I think we should give her an affair, sure. She can crawl up a lawyer's ass with the best of them. Passion, no street sports. Bring her back in. That didn't go well. Yeah. Joe. So if she's great at investigating, they just need to partner her up with someone else to be wasted on what I'm sure will boil down to a five-minute plea bargain a week's worth of paperwork. All right, let's go. Let's get to... <laughs> Cue Tom Cruise. You keep your eyes open, your chances of catching the ball increase by a factor of 10. <laughs> this analytical. Dave, it was $10 worth of oregano. Yeah, well, your client thought it was marijuana. <laughs> I'm going to charge him. What, possession of a condiment? File against pretrial confinement. You're going to spend the next three months going blind on paperwork. Dang. Just won it right there while playing baseball. I don't know why I'm agreeing to this. <laughs> Wisdom beyond your years. That was impressive. Stuff a rag down his throat, and an hour later, Santiago's dead. The rag was treated with some kind of toxin. Oh. What did they say? Not much. They're being flown up here tomorrow. So they didn't even know that they were poisoning him? That's what they're saying. Yeah. Seems important to the division that this one be handled by the book, so I'm assigning co-counsel. In other words, I have no responsibilities here whatsoever. Right. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Daniel Caffey, I was told to meet with, uh... Oh, no. Super organized. Not a briefing? I'll call you back. <laughs> this is who they got to replace me? I'm lead counsel to Sam Weinberg. I have no responsibilities here whatsoever. <laughs> How long have you been in the Navy? Going on nine months now. It's like nothing. He successfully plea bargained 44 cases in nine months. One more, I get a set of steak knives. Commander, from what I understand, if this thing goes to court, they won't need a lawyer. They'll need a priest. Whoa. Colonel Nathan Jessup, I assume you've heard of him. Who hasn't? It? The National Security Council. Really? The big position. I go wrote in his eight months at Gitmo. 
That's Guantanamo Bay. I knew that one. <laughs> Where he offered information about Corporal Dawson's fence line shooting in exchange for a transfer. Am I correct in assuming that these letters don't paint a flattering picture of Marine Corps life at Guantanamo Bay? I'll get them to drop the conspiracy and conduct unbecoming. 12 years. Pretty impressive, huh? <laughs> it's gonna be way harder than that. My jurisdiction's pretty much in your face. This is not going well. No. My sergeant grabbed me and pushed me down the hill. The last thing I remember is hitting the deck. Oh. I was brought to the hospital where I was told I just had heat exhaustion. So it's way more than just the shooting. And now he's telling tales about a fence line shooting. I wonder what the punishment for a fence line shooting is. Yeah. What the fuck is going on in Bravo Company, Matthew? Don't interrupt me, Lieutenant. I'm still your superior officer. And I'm yours, Matthew. Jeez. I think Santiago should be transferred off the base immediately. Let's transfer the whole squad off the base. Get me the president on the phone. We're surrendering our position. Jeez. Yes, sir. Wait a minute, Tom. <laughs> Don't get the president just yet. Tom was ready. <laughs> Santiago stays where he is. He already seems super psycho. I think that's a mistake, Colonel. I think I will have that word in private with you now. Oh, great. This is just another person who is affected by this guy now. It's not just those two guys. I feel like this is going to spread. Yeah. I'm just, why wouldn't you want to get rid of your weakest link? Shipping him off to another assignment puts lives in danger. At least opposite. he had like a reason, even if you don't agree with it. It wasn't just like an ego thing where, no, we need to fix him. Right. We're in the business of saving lives, Lieutenant Colonel Morganson. Keep saying that we're in the business of saving lives and we know that this guy ends up dead. Right. I mean, yeah, you can take it from both perspectives of wanting to make sure that everyone's up to par. But then also, if someone's clearly incapable, having them there is a liability. Yeah. Is this Washington, D.C.? All right, let's move. Yes, sir. So these are the two. Yeah. From the room. And while the lawyer's outside hitting a ball. <laughs> oh, missing the ball. Ordinarily, it takes someone hours to discover I'm not fit to handle a defense. She is not amused. No. This case is handled in the same fast food, slick ass, Persian bazaar manner. Then something's going to get missed. Dang. <laughs> Get to work. I don't think your clients murdered anyone. It had to be Professor Plum in the library with the candlestick. <laughs> you know what a code red is? That got his attention. What a pity. Definitely hate each other. <laughs> well, it sounds like now that may not be how he actually died. You're right. What's code red? Sir, a Marine falls out of line. It's up to the men in his unit to get him back on track. Was the attack on Santiago, Code Red? Yes, sir. We were just going to shave his head, sir. Blood all down his face, sir. That's when Lance Corporal Dawson called the ambulance. Oh. Did you fire a shot across the fence line into Cuba? Lance Corporal's claiming that his mirror was about to fire at him. Huh. There's a lot going on here. I know. What was your intent? To train him, sir. To respect the code. Unit, core, God, country. They definitely are very uh, fanatical about being Marines. And you want me to go to the prosecutor with unit, core, God, country? These two are going to have to be a little bit more human. Well, these two have a lot of work yeah. cut out for them. I'm the only friend you've got. I mean, it definitely doesn't look good. See you when I get back from Cuba. They had a cancer for me. Will do. <laughs> 20 years, they're home and happy. What do you know about Code Reds? I'm going to give you the 12 years. Cal, the meeting with the men told them not to touch Santiago. Um, what? I'll talk to you when I get back. That code red got him from 20 to 12 real quick. Yeah. Joe, if you ever speak to a client of mine again without my permission, I have you disbarred. You got authorization from Aunt Jenny? So maybe his Uncle Goober can be the judge. Wow. I'm going to Cuba with you tomorrow. <laughs> and the hits just keep on coming. I think with this code red thing, they don't want it to be known how often the Marines put other Marines in line, or to like what extent they do to do it. Jack Ross came to see me today. He offered me the 12 years. I'll take it up. I'll take it. That was too easy. I believe every word of their story, and I think they ought to go to jail for the rest of their lives. <laughs> don't forget to wear the whites. Very hot down there. Dramamine keeps you from throwing up. I don't think Dramamine will help. <laughs> I got some oregano. I hear that works pretty good. Oh, nice. Ross said the strangest thing to me right before I left. Specifically told him not to touch Santiago. I never mentioned Kendrick. I don't even know who he is. Oh, like giving him 
someone to focus on? No, I feel like it's the other way around. Like, he, he revealed too much. Like, I think he overcompensated, like, hey, they told him not to do this, so we'll just, we'll do the 12 years. Mm. That's how I took it, but... I don't know. There's a lot of moving parts. Because whoever they're talking about, they're not talking about Jack Nicholson's character. They're talking about the guy below him or the guy below him who was Keith or Sutherland. Yeah. I think one of the two middle guys. Yeah. But there's been so much talk about chain of command. Yeah. Cupid see an officer wearing white. I think it might be someone they want to take a shot at. <laughs> Shouldn't have worn the whites. <laughs> Whoa, hold it. We got to take a boat? Yes, sir. Now he needs the drama meeting. Just not that crazy about boats, that's all. Jesus Christ, Kathy, you're in the Navy. <laughs> Nobody likes her very much. <laughs> not even trying to hide their hatred anymore. No. This is my exo, Colonel Markinson, and platoon leader, Lieutenant Kendrick, I've asked them. Okay, so it's Keith Sutherland's character that mm -hmm. they... I had the pleasure of meeting your father once. I was a teenager. He spoke at my high school. How the hell is your dad, Danny? He passed away seven years ago, sir. Don't I feel like the fucking asshole? <laughs> yeah. Formality more than anything else. Jack Horn says that we interview. <laughs> Doesn't have a pen. Never. I told the men that we had an informer among us. Private Santiago was not to be harmed in any way. So he told them that he was an informant? Yeah. That's like a, a way to say, hey, don't do it, but this is exactly who it is. That's a lot of blood. Yeah. I feel like, didn't they put the rag in, duct tape him, take him out of the room? Well, they were trying to take him out of the room. Oh. Remember, he was, like, struggling? Yeah. Ooh. Lieutenant Kendrick, may I call you John? No, you may not. <laughs> Every time we gotta go someplace to fight, you fellas always give us a ride. Wow. Private Santiago is dead, and that is a tragedy. He is dead because he had no honor. Okay. Are you planning on doing any investigating, or are you just going to take the guided tour? Yeah, you don't want to come in hot with these guys, I don't think. No. Any details that I'm missing, you should feel free to speak up. Thank you. <laughs> this is going really well. We agreed that for his own safety, Santiago should be transferred off the base. Ooh. Line number one. On the first available flight to the States. Whoa. I'm just wondering if you've ever heard the term code red. Uh-oh. I've heard the term, yes. What is your point, Joe? She has no point. She often has no point, sir. It's part of her charm. <laughs> Do code red still happen on this base, crew? Joe, the colonel doesn't need to answer that. He clearly has a plan. <laughs> she outranks you, Danny. If you haven't gotten a blow job from a superior officer, you're just letting the best in life pass you by. Wow. Go on taking cold showers until they elect some gal president. <laughs> and if it happens to go on without my knowledge, so be it. Flash a badge and make me nervous. So far, these guys have had no issue being incredibly rude and standoffish. Colonel, I just need a copy of Santiago's transfer order. And I'm here to help you in any way I can? Absolutely not. You can have all the transfer orders that you want. You have to ask me nicely. That wasn't nicely? Extend me some fucking courtesy. If it's not too much trouble, I'd like a copy of the transfer order. No problem. Jeez. These two Marines specifically have such power trips. I think this other guy is going to crack, though. I think so, too. This guy. Yeah. I still don't know any of their names. <laughs> Glasses guy is going to crack. Which... He probably should. That's the good thing to do. Jack Nicholson is just like... Oh, this is like another level of his yeah, performance right yeah. now. We've seen him be just like crazy and psychotic, but this is... He's just a... This is like scary crazy. It's like scary and just like pure asshole too. Saying to myself, it's been almost three hours. Markinson's disappeared. <laughs> was that Glasses guy? I think so. This afternoon, sometime after we left. Did they kill him? Or he fled. I think Kendrick ordered the code red and so do you. Let's go. They finally agree on something. <laughs> Did Lieutenant Kendrick order you guys to give Santiago a code red? Yes, sir. You mind telling me why the hell you never mentioned this before? You didn't ask. You didn't ask us, sir. <laughs> Fuck you, Harold! All right. Lieutenant Kendrick came to our room, man. Specifically to them. Lieutenant Kendrick ordered us to give Santiago a code red. How long have you known about the order? I didn't. Who's this? Dossing down his room and specifically told him to give him a code red. You have proof? Jeez. Counterintelligence. There is no Markinson. Whoa. 
I'll knock it all down to involuntary manslaughter, two years, or home in six months. What? He's not about to see his clients go to jail for life when he knows they could be home in six months. My God, it's just such a battle of just great minds. I'll see you tomorrow morning at the arraignment. I mean, they got it all the way down to six months? The government's offering involuntary manslaughter, two years. You're the greatest lawyer in the world. Ooh, how can we ever thank you? <laughs> they didn't... Do anything. Yeah. I mean, they did. We did our job, and if that has consequences, then I'll accept them. And I won't say that I'm guilty, sir. Okay. Permission to speak! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> what do we do then, sir? When? Yeah, then they Yeah. They're... Their lives are ruined. Yeah, he is a life after this. I believe I did my job, and I will not dishonor myself or the court! Oof. Yeah, right? You're going to court. I think they fully thought that they were just going to do, like, shave his head type of stuff. Not actually that he would die. I mean, they did call the ambulance the second they noticed the blood. Do you think we were right? I think you'd lose. You're such a coward. Wow. Their code is right and wrong, and his code is winning or losing. What happened to saluting an officer when he leaves the room? Oh, my God. Everyone hates everyone in yeah. this movie so far. I want you to stand up and make an argument. An argument that didn't work for the Nazis at Nuremberg. Yeah, just following orders. These guys aren't the Nazis. Don't look now, Danny, but you're making an argument. <laughs> and you know how to win. If you walk away from this now, you've sealed their fate. He hasn't done trial, though, has he? I don't think so. He always wins before it gets there. It doesn't matter what I believe. It only matters what I can prove. You're a used car salesman, Daniel. Oh, my God. Live with that. Man, everybody's so <laughs> harsh. <laughs> Everyone just like cuts into each other. <laughs> I mean, maybe he's gonna want some real like court action instead of all of this car salesman tactics. Yeah. And he definitely seems like the guy that could fight this. Yeah. They're not guilty. We'll adjourn until 10 hundred, three weeks from today. Three weeks to prepare? Yeah. What is a lieutenant junior grade with nine months experience? Would it be so that it never sees the inside of a courtroom? Oh. Everyone's doing something for a reason. The only thing I have to eat is you who and Cocoa Puffs, so if you want anything else, bring it with you. <laughs> it's a lot of chocolate. So this is what a courtroom looks like. So, I mean, it kind of came down to his ego. He realized that they used him. Right, which I didn't even think of that. that I they, didn't either. There was a, a specific reason to send him in the first place. Markinson doesn't want to be found. We're not going to find him. You said I could be Markinson and you wouldn't know it. <laughs> Are you Markinson? <laughs> I'm not Markinson. <laughs> Gotta make sure Joe's not Markinson. You're, You're not permitted to question orders. They work at a place where you have to wear camouflage or you might get shot. Circumstances. You're better at research than I am. And you know how to prepare a witness. Everyone's got their strengths in this team. Are you Markinson? No one can prove there is poison on the rag. You just want to be able to show it could have been something other than poison. I mean, there was definitely something wrong with him, I feel like, before. You think? He just, like, heat exhaustion? I don't know if that, or what was something wrong that he passed out. Right. His medical condition was already, like, weakened. Well, you start calling him Willie and all of a sudden he's a person who's got a mother who's going to miss him. Okay? Wow, getting all prepped and ready. This is about a sales pitch. It's not going to be won by the law. It's going to be won by the lawyers. Whatever happens, you have to look like it's exactly what you knew was going to happen. Jeez. You don't wear that perfume in court. It wrecks my concentration. Really? I was talking to Sam. <laughs> it's crazy that they just talked all the way down to how to pass papers and expressions on their face. You like me? I won't make you say it. I was just going to tell you to wear matching socks tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I feel like they're going to get like punched in the face with this. Like, first day. They seem prepared, but maybe it is too good to be true. I have faith in the team, but still, they don't have much courtroom experience, if any at all. You are going to save our son, aren't you? I'll do my best. Your Aunt Jenny? I was expecting someone older. So was I. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> now, Lieutenant Caffey is going to try and pull off a little magic act here. Just trying to poke holes in the story before it even starts. Yeah. Just trying to get ahead of it. It's interesting that the jury are not civilians. Mr. McGuire, did your office receive a letter from a PFC on 3 September of this year? Yeah, the motive is pretty strong. Was that Marine identified in the letter? No. I mean, it definitely does not look good. 
Why was he charged with firing at the enemy without cause? There was enough evidence to support such a charge. <laughs> and now we'll never know. No. No more questions. <laughs> it's a good, bad, good, bad. Yeah. Kevin Bacon's good. President at a meeting that Lieutenant Kendrick held with the members of the 2nd Platoon? Yes, sir. Dang. Everyone's in this movie. Lieutenant Kendrick told us we had an informer in our group. That Santiago wasn't to be touched. Barracks room five minutes after this meeting? No, sir. I have no more questions. <laughs> the witness is excused. You're flying through this. Yeah. That none of them were in Dawson and Downey's room at 1620 on September 6th. The government will stipulate. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> they really are flying yeah. through this. Yeah. They're like, let's just cut to the chase. <laughs> All right, so they didn't really get punched too bad in the face. No. But it's hard. They're not working with much. The doctor's not telling the truth. Oh, that's a relief. So we can't prove coercion. I think they need to find this, uh, this one guy who fled. That's the biggest amount of evidence that they have. Did Willie Santiago die of poisoning? Absolutely. For a person to have an affliction, some sort of condition, might also speed up the process of acidosis. They found something. There would still be symptoms, though. What kind of symptoms? Like passing out? Shortness of breath? Fatigue? Of course. Got him. Would you read your handwritten remarks? Oh, handwritten. Patient complains of chest pains, shortness of breath, and fatigue. Mysterious poison that caused the accelerated chemical reaction. No. What? Private Santiago was given a clean bill of health. You'd have a lot to answer for, wouldn't you, doctor? Dang. Was Willie Santiago poisoned? Your Honor, we renew our objection to Commander Stone's testimony. Overruled. Move to reconsider. <laughs> Court will hear his opinion. Shoot. Literally no proof. Right. Some mysterious poison. Strenuously object. Is that how it works? <laughs> God. It's definitely a misstep. Why do you hate them so much? They didn't like him, so they killed him. And why? Because he couldn't run very fast. That is all true. Joe, go do whatever it is. <laughs> and they say nothing's going to hurt you tonight. Not on my watch. Don't worry about the doctor. This trial starts Monday. They both have legitimate reasons for their positions. But they're on the same team. Yeah. How you'd feel about my taking you to dinner tonight? <laughs> Sounded like you were asking me on a date. I wasn't. I've been asked out on dates before, and that's... <laughs> Do you like seafood? I know a good seafood place. Why are you always giving me your resume? She has to. Because I want you to think I'm a good lawyer. I do. I see you convincing them, and I think Dawson and Downey are going to end up owing their lives to you. We'll find Markinson. Joe, we're going to lose. That's the only way they're going to win is if they find him. Have you ever received a code red? Yes, sir. Took turns punching him in the arm for five minutes. Oh, then they poured glue on my hands. Jesus. And it worked, too, because I ain't never dropped my weapon since. Why didn't Santiago, this burden to his unit, ever get one? They were too afraid of Dawson, sir. Wow. Did you ever want to give Santiago a code red? Yes, sir. Dawson would kick my butt, sir. All right. That was good. Just flipped to the page of the book that discusses code reds. It's not in the book. Red is a term that we use. Is there no book? Let me know that as a Marine, one of my duties is to perform code reds. I don't right. think you made a good enough point. No, it's an unwritten rule. It says where the mess hall is, please. Well, Lieutenant Caffey, that's not in the book, sir. How did you know where the mess hall was if it's not in this book? That was very clever, but I don't know if everyone got it. <laughs> it's too clever. You can appreciate it. Yeah. No flies on you. Rolling Stone gathers no more. <laughs> it ain't over to the fat, fat lady, lady sings. <laughs> I feel like he's gonna give him a. Oh. Is that him? Yeah. <laughs> Christ! You left the door unlocked. <laughs> was it a code red? Yes. Did Kendrick give the order? Yes. Yeah, you know shit. <laughs> he was never gonna be transferred off that base. Yeah, did they ever even get that paperwork? You got the transfer order. It's got your signature. Yeah. I signed him the morning you arrived in Cuba. Oh. You're gonna tell the court exactly what you told me. I want him guarded. That's probably a good idea. My clearance code is four. There's no way. Yeah. I don't have a clearance code. Do you have a clearance Danny. code? Danny. <laughs> Sam, when a flight takes off, there's got to be some kind of record kept, right? We're going to win. Joe, don't get crazy about it. <laughs> you just concentrate on Downey. I'm going to talk to Ross and tell him where we are. I have Mark and Sam. <laughs> just straight out with it. If you accuse Kendrick or Jessup of any crime without proper evidence, you're going to be subject to a court martial. He doesn't care. No. I'm not saying this to intimidate you. I'm being your lawyer here. And this code of honor of yours makes me want to beat the shit out of someone. <laughs> think your clients belong in jail, but I don't get to make that decision. There's a warning just to attack people above you. You got bullied into that courtroom by the memory of a dead lawyer. 
Whoa, that was out of line. You're a lousy fucking softball player, Jack! <laughs> the boys are going down, Danny. Oh, uh, I don't know what's gonna happen. No idea. Private Santiago was below average. Lance Corporal Dawson's ranking after the School of Infantry was perfect. Dawson was given such a poor grade on this report? I write many reports. Don't remember? The only proper authorities I am aware of are my commanding officer, Colonel Nathan R. Jessup. This court is a proper authority. Watch yourself, counselor. <laughs> Lieutenant, do you know what a code red is? Yes, I do. Private Bell received no food or drink except water for a period of seven days. Whoa. Wouldn't this form of discipline be considered code red? No. Was Dawson given a rating of below average because you learned he'd been sneaking food to Private Bell? Oh. Lance Corporal Dawson disobeyed an order. <laughs> Can Dawson determine on his own which orders he's going to follow? No, he cannot. Oh, man. Wow. Just totally got him into that trap. Not to think Santiago. he would have disobeyed you again? Lieutenant, don't answer that. You don't have to. I'm through. <laughs> Just walked him right into that. Lieutenant Kendrick, did no, you? No, I did not. Thank you. Ooh. Oh, if only he would have cracked a little bit more. 6 a.m. flight was the first plane out. Let me see this. What? They must have changed the log. There was no flight at 11 o'clock. What the fuck are you trying to pull? He fixed the logbook? Well, you don't get to that position without knowing how to sidestep a few land. Oh, my God. You don't still intend to put me on the stand. Thursday morning, 10 o'clock. I feel like this guy's not making it to Thursday. I think you're right. A kid from the ground crew isn't going to remember a flight that landed. I really don't feel like this is enough. Lieutenant Jonathan James Kendrick. You're going to do fine. <laughs> you think they'll let us go back to our platoon soon, ma'am? Oh, no. Absolutely. That's the first smile. Yeah. Even though she lied to him. All right. And get him off as fast as you can. Joanne. It's going to be fine. <laughs> we'll try to offer you an explanation as to why William is dead. Oh, no. Your son is dead for only one reason. I wasn't strong enough to stop it. Dang it. How far is it from post 39 to the Windward Barracks? Good hour by foot, am I right? It's 1620. Yeah, there's not enough time to get there. She just said that you didn't make it back to the Windward Barracks until 1645. Lieutenant Kendrick, order a code red. No, sir. Oh, no. What? Pal? Did Lance Corporal Dawson tell you to give Santiago a code red? Private, answer the captain's question. Yes, Captain. Oh, oh no. no. This just ruined everything. But they lied to the lawyers. They lied to their own lawyers. <sighs> But someone had to give Dawson the order. Maybe we put Downey back on the stand before we get to Dawson. That we could get Dawson charged with the Kennedy assassination. <laughs> oh, no. Are you drunk? Pretty much. It was a setback, and I'm sorry. But we fix it and move on to Markinson. Markinson's dead. Fired a bullet into his mouth. Anyway, since we seem to be out of witnesses, I thought I'd drink a little. Man, this totally fell apart. To subpoena Colonel Jessup. Just hear me no, out. No, I won't listen and I won't hear you out. They always go hard on each other. Why did you ask Jessup for the transfer order? You wanted to see Jessup's reaction when you asked for the transfer order. He told Kendrick to order the code red. He did? You have proof of that. Keep forgetting you were sick the day they taught law at law school. Oh my god. It's a court martial! Yes, Johnny! Get it out, get it out. Follow the advice of the galactically stupid! <laughs> That was a lot. I'm sorry I lost your set of steak knives. I mean, at this point, you're already kind of screwed. You might as well just swing for the fences. What is there left to do? Not much. And if I were Dawson and Downey and I had a choice between you or your father, I'd choose you any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Would you put Jessup on the stand? No. Nope. You think my father would have? Not in a million years. Because there's really only one question. What would you do? Go for it. <laughs> I mean, the only benefit you have is that Jessup's ego is so strong and he thinks he's above everything that he might just not even give a shit what he says. I'm going to put Jessup on the stand. <laughs> the change in music. Oh, man. Pissed off that he's got to hide from us. I think he wants to say that he made a command decision and that's the end of it. 300 yards away from 4,000 Cubans that are trained to kill him. A pretty good impression. Yeah. Boy, I need to shake him, put him on the defensive, and lead him right where he's dying to go. Yeah, use his strengths against him. How are you gonna do it? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, his closet? 
Trying to make a connection. Yeah, what did you find out, Tom? Oh, the closet of the, the guy. Santiago. Who, yeah. Sam, I need you to do something for me. Find out if that plane actually did land. Well, we're going to figure it out once he reveals it to everyone else. <laughs> Where's Sam? He's on his way. Did he get the guys? Yeah. If you feel like he's not going to say it, don't go for it. You could get in trouble. Is that a way to like make sure he does get him or... Defense calls Colonel Nathan Jessup. <laughs> what an entrance. And he really needs Sam to show up. At present, Colonel Markinson is dead. I just wasn't sure if the witness is aware that two days ago the Colonel took his own life with a 45 caliber pistol. Move on, Lieutenant. Who are you to... I told Kendrick to tell his men that Santiago wasn't to be touched. I ordered Markinson to have Santiago transferred off the base immediately. No, you did not. I felt his life might be in danger once word of the letter got out. Grave danger? Is there another kind? <laughs> the 0600 was the first flight off the base. Your Honor, I'd ask the court for a little latitude. A very little latitude. <laughs> I brought a change of clothes and some personal items. Santiago's barracks room was sealed off and its contents inventory. Four pairs of camouflage pants, three long sleeve khaki shirts, three pairs of boots. Oh, he wasn't packed? I'm wondering why Santiago wasn't packed. We'll get back to that one in a minute. <laughs> After being subpoenaed to Washington, you made three calls and highlighted those calls in yellow. And these are 14 letters in nine months. That do you know how many people he called? Zero. You were leaving for one day. You packed a bag and made three phone calls. And he hadn't called a soul. And he hadn't packed a thing. Oh, wow. Can you explain that? <laughs> it's not really like evidence, but it's great. No transfer order. Santiago wasn't going anywhere. The Lieutenant Caffey be reprimanded for his conduct. Overruled. All right. My answer is I don't have the first damn clue. What I do know is that he was set to leave the base at 0600. Please tell me that you have something more, Lieutenant. Oh, I hope you do. Please tell me that their lawyer hasn't pinned their hopes to a phone bill. What about the two guys you just brought in? Lieutenant Cathy? What's happening? I don't know. Go for it. Lieutenant, do you have anything further for this witness? Do it. Come on, you have him on the ropes. I didn't dismiss you. I beg your pardon? I'm not through with my examination. Sit down. Yes, come on! <laughs> Put him in his place. Dress me as Colonel or Sir. I believe I've earned it. Defense counsel will address the witness as Colonel. Oh, no. <laughs> and the witness will address this court as Judge or Your Honor. Yeah. I'm quite certain I've earned it. It's starting to come out, that not giving a shit attitude. There wasn't a flight that left seven hours earlier and landed at Andrews Air Force Base at 2 a.m. Andrews logged with no flight that landed at 2 a.m. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> flight that never existed. Oh, we believe it did, sir. Defense will be calling Airman Cecil O'Malley and Airman Anthony Rodriguez. I'll allow the witnesses. All right, Judge. For Christ's sake. Well, we'll get to the airman in just a minute, sir. Just <laughs> keeping him waiting. Santiago wasn't to be touched. That's right. Any chance Lieutenant Kendrick ignored the order? Ignored the order? No. Walked him to the same trap. So any chance they ignored him? You ever served in an infantry unit, son? No, sir. We follow orders or people die. It's that simple. Ooh, so there's no choice, huh? <laughs> are we clear, Crystal? And your orders are always followed. And why would Santiago be in danger? <laughs> Santiago was a substandard Marine. You I said he was in danger. I said grave danger. You said is there I any other... <laughs> I know what I said. I don't have to have it read back to me like I'm... Why the two orders? orders? You snotty little bastard. <laughs> I'd like an answer to the question, Judge. The court will wait for an answer. Oh, man. Did you order the code red? You don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. <laughs> I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! There it is. <laughs> You have the luxury of not knowing what I know. You need me on that wall. I did the job. Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did! Oh my god. Case over? Please, the court. I suggest the members be dismissed. Jack? He just confessed. The members of the court will retire to an ante room until further instructed. Oh my god. It worked! I'm gonna get on a plane and go on back to my base. What the hell is this? Colonel Jessup, you have the right to remain silent. <laughs> I'm gonna rip the eyes out of your head and piss at your dead skull! 
All you did was weaken a country today, Kathy. Sweet dreams, son. I'm a lawyer and an officer, and you're under arrest, you son of a bitch. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, man. I mean, something will happen. He'll get off, I'm sure. But that was amazing. <laughs> Have the members reached a verdict? We have, sir. Better be not guilty. Lance Corporal Dawson, Private First Class Downey. I feel like it's still going to be guilty. On the charge of murder, the members find the accused not guilty. Oh! On the charge of conspiracy to commit murder, not guilty. Whew. On the charge of conduct unbecoming a United States Marine. Guilty? Guilty as charged. Ordered to be dishonorably discharged from the Marine Corps. I mean, they still attacked a Marine. That's the only thing they didn't want. Right, was they wanted to stay Marines. So yeah, they lost. Colonel Jessup said he ordered the code red. What did we do wrong? Followed it. He was supposed to fight for people who couldn't fight for themselves. He was supposed to fight for Willie. You don't need to wear a patch in your arm to have honor. I'm gonna testify under oath that they had absolutely no recollection of any. <laughs> I'll see you around campus. I gotta go arrest Kendrick. Tell him I say hi. Will do. <laughs> I like that they're still like friends. <laughs> Man, that's great that those two guys are just there to do nothing. He's like, there's no way that they're going to remember four days yeah. or four weeks. All right. That was a few good men. What'd you think? I loved it. That was great. That was so good. It wasn't like a super mystery of what happened. It was pretty clear. I mean, there was still like little shocking moments throughout, but from... The moment you meet uh, Jack Nicholson's character, Jessup, he's a complete psychopath. Yeah. Like, it's pretty obvious that he's the top dog and the order came from him. So it was more just like kind of how are we going to prove this? Not necessarily like, oh, man, what exactly happened that night? Right. But the game of figuring out how they were going to prove it was so good. It was so good, especially because there was literally like no evidence. Yeah. So it really was just this crazy battle of the minds of a lot of people who hated each other, but respected each other for the most part. Um, but it was just a back and forth, up and down. It was wild. Yeah, and I mean, really, it coming down to at the end, him spooking Jessup enough with two people that literally were gonna say, we didn't remember anything. <laughs> yeah, like that was, they were just there to intimidate. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if that's not the perfect ending to this film, yeah. like, I don't know what would be. It was just so good. I mean, every single person in this gave an amazing performance. Mm -hmm. We talked like right in the beginning of the movie that we were aware of that one super famous line of like, you can't handle the truth. We've seen that spoofed or just a gif or whatever, but no idea or the context around it. So to kind of see that happen in the end, mm -hmm. geez Louise, that was amazing. I know I was waiting for it in the courtroom. Right. But like that wasn't even necessarily the, the climax. No. It, like it was leading up to it, but I, yeah. you know, that whole speech by Jack Nicholson was just amazing, culminating in him being like, "You're damn right, I did." Yeah, and that's that's what he was trying to do. He just had to keep poking the bear until he just finally wanted to, you know, kind of like almost show off that be like, mm -hmm. "I can do whatever I wanted to." Yeah because I use the excuse that I'm doing it to keep everyone safe at night. And if I don't kill this Marine, then other people are going to die. And it's like, no, come on, you could have just sent him home. But he just was so engrossed with his own power that he was just like, I could say whatever the hell I want in this courtroom. It doesn't matter. Like, what are you going to do? Arrest me? Yeah. The fact that he didn't even realize he was getting arrested yeah. at the end. Yeah. He was like, I'm going to get on a flight. I'm out of here. Yeah. Like you just admitted <laughs> to what led to Santiago's death. Right. And you just thought that you could get up and leave. And like the more that I'm thinking about it, it's actually kind of interesting because I thought maybe at some point they would reveal that they were aware of his medical condition. Yeah. So they were purposely trying to kill him. But I don't think they actually were. Obviously, he did have the medical condition. And that's what caused it. Mm -hmm. But as shitty as Jessup is, I think it was a code red to put him in line. Yeah. Not to the extreme of, hey, go kill him. No, not at all. That was, I think, a freak 
accident, just a combination of his condition that that doctor didn't see. Yeah. Um, even though he literally wrote down all, all the of the symptoms for it. Jessup was crazy and he was power hungry and all of the things that you could say about him, but I don't think that he expected anyone to die. No, and like if I had to take this movie and extend it like six months in just like my own pessimistic view of the world, I would assume Jessup would probably get a slap on the wrist and it would probably fall on the doctor's shoulders. Like Jessup would probably be like, yes, I did do the code red, but it was only to intimidate him or scare him a little, shave his head, just kind of get him in line. But it was the doctor who fucked up. If the doctor would have been clear on his report, then I obviously never would have done the code red. Well, I mean, he would have been home because he probably wouldn't have been fit to even be there. Yeah, so that's, you know, my, <laughs> take this out. Nothing's happening to Jessup. He's not going to spend any time in prison. That doctor's going to get annihilated, probably. Or it's going to fall on someone's shoulders. I wanted, like, a happy ending, but it was still, like, a realistic ending. They had that conversation about, you know, the excuse of, I was just following orders. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not a good excuse. Yeah. And it came into play in the end when, you know, they were sentenced to be guilty for the lesser charge. And, you know, it's like, but why? Like, we were just following orders. But at the end of the day, like, someone died because of their actions. Right. Yeah. They they needed to know the difference between what right and wrong. And that is part of their code as well. Right. It's not just blindly following whatever order. There's ways, I'm sure, obviously, we've talked about this a million times with all of the war films that we've seen that we have zero experience yeah. in any <laughs> Anything branch that was, yeah. of the military, <laughs> but there's got to be steps to take because you don't have all of these people that are currently serving just blindly following crazy leaders. Right. That was a really powerful moment when Dawson, you know, was like, we did do something wrong. Like we do have a code and an honor that we follow, but part of that is to defend the defenseless. Right. And so, you know, they should have protected Santiago. Right. Um, even if that means disobeying an order. So it was a realistic ending and it sucked for everyone. Mm -hmm. Someone ended up dying and all they wanted, even if it meant their lives would be destroyed, would be to still be Marines. Yeah, they wanted to face whatever punishment would come their way because they knew that they were just following orders, but the only thing that was taken away from them is the one thing that they wanted to keep. Yeah. I don't know if they said like how long they would be in prison or even if they were going to be in prison or anything, but it seemed like the only thing was that they were going to be dishonorably discharged. Oh, no, they did. They said that the prison sentence would be time served. Oh, okay. So no more time than what they've already been in there, which is like, what, four weeks or... Right. Well, maybe more than that. But the only thing that they were getting from that point forward was this dishonorable discharge. <laughs> which, yeah, obviously you could see in their faces was terrible. Yeah, it was devastating for both of them. And I mean, obviously, I mean, it came down to the fact that even Downey just didn't comprehend what was happening. No. Which I felt really bad for Downey. Yeah. I mean, you feel bad for like everyone yeah. almost in the movie. Yeah. It was brutal. Like everyone was just an asshole to everyone else at a lot of times. But then there was a lot of respect get being given around. And like one of the moments I really liked is how much um, Tom Cruise and Kevin Bacon's characters could kind of go at it outside of the courtroom. But they were both aware of what was morally right. Yeah. And I mean, I think just saying how fantastic all of the actors are in this as well. The people that you were supposed to hate, like you really hated. Oh yeah. Like Kiefer Sutherland. Horrible, hated him. Like Yeah, just awful. I forgot what Tom Cruise said at one point, like in the bar where he was like, your guys' stupid code like makes me want to like fight someone or something like that. Like just that, the arrogance of Keith Sutherland's character. Yeah. I was just like, oh my God, I hate this guy. Yeah, no, he was the worst. And I feel like when I think of Keith versus Sutherland, I think of 24. Right, saving the world. <laughs> yeah, like you love him. And so, I mean, it's just, it's incredible the acting in this. And then obviously, uh, Jessup, Jack Nicholson, Stellar. Yeah. I mean, he's really not in the movie much. No. 
for that famous line, you would think that he would be like in the movie the entire time, but yeah. he's probably in this movie like 10 minutes and it's yeah. like a two and a half hour long movie, but he just <laughs> steals the entire movie practically. Yeah. Yeah, everyone, Tom Cruise, Demi Moore, uh, everyone did amazing, mm -hmm. such a stacked cast. Yeah. Um, and I love that it focused more on the calculating battles between everyone. Like, yeah. how are we going to move on from this? Because they had missteps and it was like, okay, this is another challenge. How do we move past it? Right. I mean, and then we have to talk about Tom Cruise, who is Lieutenant Daniel. Daniel. If you guys didn't know. <laughs> and then Kevin Pollock is Lieutenant Sam. Right. So Daniel and Sam made a great team. Made a great team. If only uh, Demi Moore's character, if her name was was Cooper, <laughs> our, our dog, dog. <laughs> our dog, then it, then you know the whole team would be here. <laughs> but no, that was really funny. We didn't even yeah. pick up on that until like after the movie, practically. I mean, I didn't say it out loud till after the movie, <laughs> okay. but I did pick up on it because I think there's at some point somebody called. I might have been even Sam called Tom Cruise's character Daniel, because for the most part, they weren't using his first name. Yeah, they didn't say like Kathy. Yeah, so when they said that, I was like, wait. And I was like, isn't his name Sam? And I was like, oh, that was cool. Yeah. I thought it was cool. No, that's cool. A little touch. <laughs> <laughs> we, feel, we felt a part of it. Yeah. Because I, I feel like we do love those movies that are very like detective, try to figure things out and stuff. Yeah. And as much as I loved this movie, like I said, it's not super big on the mystery trying to figure things out. It's more on like, here's everything that happened. How do we win this? Yeah. How do you prove or how do you, what is it? Prove without a reasonable doubt or whatever it is that the jury needs to do. Right. And also, I think you did touch on that you were surprised that the jury were all like military. Yeah, they're all military of some sort. And I was kind of thinking the same thing until the very end, until Tom Cruise was questioning Jack Nicholson and he was kind of going back and forth with him on the orders, right. like the ranks. And I was just kind of thinking, obviously being like a civilian, this is more important for the jury to be in a branch of the military to understand and to have been in that, you know? Yeah, it's very interesting to look at it because on one end you would be like, okay, everyone in this room is military. Yeah. So there's a lot of bias here mm -hmm. uh, to kind of protect your own. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense to have civilians in there because they would not necessarily have that bias. But then they may have a bias to be or against- Or harsh or not understanding. Not understanding or uh, something against uh, uh, authority. Yeah. So there's this weird balance of should it be civilian, should it not? But I think you're right. I think in the grand scheme of things to have it all be military and the jury and the lawyers and the judge and everything, you can talk about things that are not going to go over someone's head. Right, exactly. So I was surprised by that. I didn't actually know that that was a thing. Yeah, I, that's, um, I, I didn't know that that's how it would be operated. Yeah, I assumed obviously when decisions are made, especially with, you know, like what happened with them being dishonorably discharged or when there's like court martial, anything like that. I did assume that it was all a military decision, but I kind of thought it was like a board of some sort that did that, that made those decisions. I wasn't thinking that it was like a jury of your peers type of thing. Yeah. So that was really interesting to kind of learn that. Right, you, you got like a real insight on how issues are handled internally in the military. Yeah. I mean, this was flawless from, from start to finish. Yeah. It's a relatively longer movie but it keeps your attention the entire time. Yeah. Oh my God, like I know exactly what happened, but how the hell are they gonna pull it off? Yeah. But Tom Cruise pulled it off in the end. For the most part. I mean, I guess he did. Yeah. <laughs> Again, regardless, I, they were still wrong. They were still wrong. Yeah. They just weren't as wrong as they Murder. could have been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was amazing. That was a great recommendation. Thank you for everyone who recommended it and for voted for it to win our poll because I will definitely be telling anyone who hasn't seen this movie to absolutely watch it, even if it's just to appreciate the, the performances of all these actors and actresses. Yeah, I agree. This was a great watch. Very happy we watched it. Yeah. 
So if you would like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those things will be in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.